What's going on guys? This is Mark Cooper with Top Knox Fishing. I'm here on the banks of Melton Hill Reservoir. That's currently blown out like every other lake and river here in East Tennessee because we've just had an insane amount of rainfall the past few days. I've got a bunch of other striper videos and catfish videos lined up, but I also have had quite a few requests to do a video on the tackle gear and such I use to catch skipjack and other species. So the first one I'm gonna do is skipjack herring because a lot of the times you've gotta catch the bait before you can even chase the big fish. So that's where we're gonna start first. That's our, uh, our beginning point of the journey on gear. Um, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I don't get paid anything to do this. I'm gonna include the links to the products that I, I bought and purchased myself and use 100 to 200 days a year to catch skipjack in the, the description of the video here below and it'll make it a whole lot easier for you to find them instead of having to go search all over the place to it. I've got almost a decade of experience catching these guys and I've really nailed down the best gear for the money that will last and increase your efficiency of catching skipjack while you're out there because none of us wanna chase bait all day. We wanna go out there and chase the big fish. Um, unless you like catching skipjack for fun, that's cool. I do that sometimes, but the least time you spend catching bait or trying to catch bait the more time you get chasing the big fish so uh, the tackle i have is designed to help you do that better and i'll explain why in this video okay so the first thing we're going to go over here is the line that i use on all of my reels and the leader material i use on all of my reels both are very important tools in the whole skipjack catching system and of course some guy starts to mow his yard while i'm trying to film the video that's how it goes all right, so now let's talk about the line I use. I only use braided line with skipjack herring as the main line. The reason for that is because skipjack are basically mini tarpon, and they have really bony mouths, and it's extremely hard to set the hook set or set the hook on them in general. And braid helps you do that, and it's way more sensitive. So that's what I use. That's what a lot of the saltwater guys use for tarpon. So we just apply that towards skipjack here, but on a smaller level. When I throw in Foley spoons or something with heavier weight, I'll use 20 pound test. And when we're throwing sabiki rigs that are on these rods, I'll use 10 to 15 pound test because it's a smaller diameter and it lets you throw it farther. And if you don't have a boat or the skipjack are busting way far away from you, you need to have casting distance or slingability. And the smaller diameter braided line will let you do that. Now, when you're catching skipjack, you can catch more than one at a time when you're using the uh, the grub rigs and the, the fly rigs, which I'm gonna go over here in a second. If you use smaller pound test monofilament, it gets tangled up really easily when you're throwing it and you'll break them off a lot. So what I use is 17 pound fluorocarbon. This is Berkeley Vanish. I'll put a link in the description below. Let's see if you can see it there. This is what I use for skipjack and trout and white bass stuff like that but the thicker line on the leader itself allows you to catch a ton of them without having to retie your rigs all the time so that's really important it saves you some time and you won't break them off and you know if you think fluorocarbon not being able to see the line in the water helps it's an extra factor there okay so the first bait we're going to talk about when catching skipjack herring is the multi-purpose and skipjack catching machine the foley spoon they make tons of different sizes and colors for them uh, the three different sizes are one and three eighths one and five eighths and the two inch so i have uh, a few of each uh, color isn't the most important thing for me or what i have found but i do have all the different sizes at all times because i always uh, change between them to see how active the skipjack are and just a size change can make a huge difference now when you're rigging these guys they've got to have some kind of lead weight in front of them to to, to sling because they're very light so i use these things called trolling sinkers they come in various sizes and they've got a barrel swivel swivel on the bottom and top of them that you connect your main line and your leader line to now the way you rig that up is you'll take your main line here you'll take your main line this is 20 pound suffix 832 braid connected to a three quarter ounce trolling sinker with 17 pound fluorocarbon leader connected to the foley spoon now this is about 24 inches of line in between the foley spoon and the sinker 
you don't want to go super long on the leader line because it inhibits your ability to throw it really far if you've ever been surf fishing or anything like that um, the smaller the leader line you have the further you can cast your bait just because it's not tangling in the air and messing up your momentum for throwing foley spoons and heavier things when you're fishing for skipjack I use a Mojo inshore rod from St. Croix. It's a seven foot six, medium heavy or medium fast, uh, which means it's got a really fast action tip at the top, which lets you throw the Foley spoon rig a long distance, but it tapers really quickly uh, to the backbone. So you've got a lot of power to horse them in. I also catch stripers on this rig. So if you do that too, you can rig up swim baits and stuff after you caught bait on this. I caught a 45 pounder on it the other day. It's an awesome rig. Um, the reel here is kind of super overkill for <laughs> skipjack, but like I said, I do a lot of different type of fishing, so I have stuff that, that will allow me to do that. It's a pin conflict. Uh, I'm not sure the size on it. I'll have to find it and put it in this description below. Uh, but it's a saltwater reel, and you know, it's bulletproof. I break everything. Haven't been able to break this yet. Um, and this is one of the toughest rods I've ever had. I've owned several of them. The last one took me and my buddies two and a half years to break, uh, but it finally did. And like I said, I fish 100 to 150 days a year, sometimes more. And uh, catching bait is an integral part in that. So this is my all around go-to rod for catching skipjack. It throws the Foley spoons the best because you can get an insane amount of distance out of it if you're bank fishing below a dam. And uh, has a super super uh, sensitive tip so you can set the hook from a long distance but a lot of power to get them in real quick so uh, that's my favorite all-around skipjack rod it's a, an expensive setup but it's something you'll have for years and years uh, my other rigs are way less expensive i'm gonna go over those next uh, you don't have to have this to catch skipjack i just do it all the time so i invest in good gear and uh, this is one of the best things for it now foley spoons or the foley spoon rig is the most effective below dams and spillways or when you're in heavy current in river situations uh, the fly rig the grub rig and stuff like that uh, sometimes can be least effective in those scenarios because you can't attain any depth because there's so much current and they're so light so the foley spoon you can change out the size of your trolling sinker and you can let it get all the way down to the bottom in 15 20 feet of water before you start reeling in heavy current so that has been the most effective tool for me below dams and uh, spillways or even at uh, hot water discharges that are pumping a lot of water out uh, because they're they're easy to use in current and are really built for that um, you can also troll them really easily back behind your boat if you're in a main lake situation throw them out behind your boat uh, 40 to 50 yards and troll at about two miles an hour maybe less and just pump it in your hand and i've caught a lot of skipjack doing it that way too but the uh, below the dam scenario spillways is the perfect time to use a foley spoon now the next thing we're going to look at are sabiki rigs grub rigs fly rigs uh, there's a ton of different ways to tie them and those ways depend on time of year for the skipjack the size of bait they're feeding on and water color okay so this right here is the walmart special you guys have seen this wear out skipjack in a ton of my videos this is a Heck, I can't even remember the name of this reel. Accurus. William or me found this in the budget bin at Walmart, but it's just a medium sized spinning reel uh, with uh, you know a mid tier gear ratio. Now, gear ratio is important for this reason. Gear ratio is defined by how much line the reel can take in. Ow, I'm getting stabbed by a hook. How much line is taken in per crank of the handle. When fishing, depth and speed are your two most important factors. So speed here is affected by the gear ratio of the reel. If you've got a, a reel that's super, super fast where you can make just minimal turns and it's burning the lure back, that sometimes is horrible on days when they're super inactive. So all my different reels here, this one right here is gonna be the fastest gear ratio, most powerful one. And to this one right here, which is the slowest, are all designed or you know pick chosen to be effective at different times when the skipjack are active or not active so it's important to have two or three different setups that vary in speed because i've been in the boat with three or four buddies we're all using the same bait we're all basically cranking it at the same speed and popping it and twitching it the exact same way and one person will be absolutely 
tearing them up and none of us are catching anything and what happens is one of them's got the reel with the right gear ratio and the right speed and they just don't know it so that's super important in all types of fishing and especially skipjack herring okay so let's look at a sabiki rig the first thing that starts out with is the line here this is 10 pound suffolk's 832 braided line don't get cheap braided line buy this stuff the cheap stuff will win not on you break and it'll just be awful just invest in the good stuff one time and you'll be done with it for a long time so that's what i'm using for the line on this reel and all the other fly rigs because i need smaller diameter to throw it further that line runs to a small barrel swivel here uh, can be cheap barrel swivels. It doesn't matter. These the skipjack don't weigh a lot I just use some saltwater ones I found on eBay and Amazon I'll put a link in the description and then we've got about four feet or three to four feet of leader line And the leader line is a 17 pound test fluorocarbon now You're gonna take your flies or your grubs and you're gonna tie them equidistant apart about three to four inches Maybe more five inches apart all the way down the line and then at the very bottom, I put a grub with a one quarter ounce lead head, two ounce or a one quarter ounce lead head and a, a two inch grub. And then a split shot here. The reason why you do that is when you're throwing these, you want this thing, that grub right there to fly straight and land straight in the water first. If you've got the heavier weight on one of these other jigs right here, it'll fly, uh, in non-uniform manner through the air and tangle everything up so you want your heavier weight at the bottom and you can throw this rig probably 40 50 yards no problem just lob it and if you're fishing from the bank or fishing from an area where you need distance to get to the skipjack this is going to cut your fishing time in half by two or three hundred percent i've been standing next to people in the bank who are using 12 pound mono who can throw it 15 yards and then i roll up with this stuff and you know it just is a more effective tool for it so go with that now the rod is a walmart special too this is a cherry wood hd i've used these for years i don't know if they discontinued them but these are the cheapest best rods i have found for catching skipjack and i've caught stripers and walleye and everything else on them it's a seven foot medium action uh one eighth ounce to three quarter ounce uh lure rating with the line rating of six to fourteen and here's the kicker here it has aluminum eyelets so when you're using braid and non-aluminum eyelets, the inserts, it'll pop that out and cut your line. So you want to find a rod that's got aluminum eyelets, which is important. The next rig here is a similar fly rig, but it has smaller flies on it. And when you've got inactive skipjack or crappie or whatever, downsizing your bait can be the ticket to catching more of them. So these are just smaller Popeye grubs with a smaller grub at the bottom. And I found in situations where you aren't getting bit on anything, if you use this with the super slow retrieve and let it sink all the way to the bottom, you'll catch you a couple baits, which can mean all the difference out there fishing. And this is um, a cheaper rod. It's an ugly chic inshore select. It's got the aluminum guides. Um, it's kind of got a flimsier tip than one I like, but for these smaller baits, it works out. And then uh, this is just, you know, a mid-tier spinning reel. Um, that works out great on this rig. All right, so the final one we're going to go over today is a pop and cork rig. Now, the pop and cork is most effective when the skipjack are busted on the surface and you can't get bit on anything else. I'll pull this out. This is a pop and cork you can find them at Academy Sports. Link in the description below. Uh, Amazon. Uh, they they came from saltwater. They use it for redfish and stuff like that, but they work for skipjack. So you got your pop and cork main line, leader line here. You want a little bit of a longer leader line here, uh, about two and a half feet to a two inch fully spoon right there. And uh, I've got another video showing how to use this that I'm going to put an I card for as well in this video. But if the skipjack are chasing bait on the surface and are crazy active and you can't hit get hit on anything else, this is the rig I go with and it helps out a ton. All right, so this reel right here is probably all around the cheapest and best quality reel for skipjack 
catching. Uh, it's changed names over the years a few times. This was a Silver Max Real Abu Garcia, but I believe they call it the Max STX now. It's like 30 bucks and it lasts her forever. I've had this one for six months and I've had two or three other ones for years before we finally stripped the gears on them. Um, so this is a great one if you're just starting skipjack fishing or fishing in general. Eh, there's a skipjack busted right there. Um, this is where you need to start out at. This is the reel I would get. It's not crazy expensive. It's pulled up with some 10 pound, 15 pound Suffix 832 braided line. And you can use this setup for all the different rigs. Um, I just have the other ones because they fit a little niche purpose that I've, I like. Uh, but this is the best all around one. Okay, so here are the baits that I keep on me at all times. We already went over the foley spins. Different sizes, different colors. We've got the grubs. These are Mr. Twisters one inch style ones. The Mr. Tr Twisters ones uh, stand up the best to the skipjack. They don't get torn apart as much and you can find them anywhere. They're at Walmart, Amazon, all those other different places. You got your differing size grub heads here, lead heads. So you can get you different colors. Remember just put the heaviest one on the bottom of your rig so it flies correctly. Then you got your trolling sinkers. Eagle Claw makes these right here, half ounce to an ounce. I always have different sizes depending on how much current there is because sometimes a dam will be running a ton of current, sometimes a little. The more weight you use, the further it'll throw, uh, but sometimes you need to use a little bit of a lighter weight if they're uh, kind of finesse oriented, the skipjack. You can change those out, uh, but I usually go heavier. Like three quarter ounces is normally what I'm throwing. If there's a ton of current and I gotta throw it a half mile, I'll use the ounce one. But uh, most of the time, half ounce, three quarter ounce. And these are just your generic split shot sinkers. You clip them on the bottom of your jigs like I did here so they throw correctly and you can get it further and let it sink deeper. Um, important to have. Um, but basically that's all the tackle you really need to start skipjack fishing. Um, I've got a couple other videos on the water and in most of my striper videos you'll see us catching them and the cadences and stuff we use but this is the gear that I use day in and day out. Um, crazy reliable you can catch tons of different other kinds of fish on it but uh, you know this will get you on that way of catching the big fish. Alright guys thanks for watching. I'm normally a on the water fishing type of guy but I realize sometimes it's really important to go over these basic things that uh, you know have taken me years to learn uh, that I hope uh, I can show you guys in a shorter amount of time to where you have to spend less money and time on the water but get to have fun with your friends and family more often because of uh, me cutting your learning curve so this is what we use all the time to catch skipjack white bass stuff like that um, get the good tackle it's not all about the tackle but you need good stuff good tools to get the job done and uh, it'll definitely cut your time chasing bait in half at least uh, having the good gear knowing the where to look for the skipjack and the way to present your baits to them which means more time fishing for the big fish and uh, chasing that fish of a lifetime hope you guys enjoyed this one as always remember to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll catch you next time